Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another Sunday Absolution stream with the 2MK team. It is another Absolver day, as there are still some time left before the release of DNF Duel. So I'm gathering up the team in order to carry the, us over to the next battle arena that we intend to use for the day. This one is cool, but we're not using this one. Maybe next week. Unfortunately, I'm not entirely sure where all the team members are, so I'm just going to have to hope that they know the way or can watch back the beginning of this stream a little bit if they're completely lost and can't find their way to where they need to be. This is, after all, a very difficult navigation sometimes, hence th the title of the stream. Shifting shadows. Can't even use it to tell people, like, go east, go west. Those shadows change based on zone changes for ambience purposes. It made sense in the story of the game, but... Uh. So today we are hanging out in the harbor. Usually, this area here you're seeing now is the area we intend to use for matches. There's another one that is probably more familiar to people who actually play this game in the standard PvP mode. You'd end up fighting over here very red today, but we're not doing that. And I do have at least one opponent, so we'll be able to possibly run back and forth and figure out whether or not the people that we are with are actually doing anything specific in terms of finding or not finding the battleground. In the meantime, enjoy the view for a moment. I technically need a verification that the stream is even working. But it sounds like we're great, so moving on. Today we probably won't be having our usual, let's call it, issues with the system. Specifically, when you are trying to play this game with people who are not in the same geographical location as you, you'll find yourself often being unable to get them into the same arena as you without doing some weird things. This also means that today, we might get more people in, as this is a closer area to the starting area of the game. Though those people really should not necessarily join in, as it's often too much work. When you're first starting out, you might be able to get some moves, but you have to actually win fights for this to happen. And that's really not helpful. One O to me. As I noted, this game actually does have a proper mode for this. But you can't necessarily use it right away. Or rather, I think you might be able to use it right away, but you wouldn't want to. The people you fight will be a little bit more than most people can easily handle. In nearly every of these streams, I give some minor explanation as to how the game works, and that'll be happening today as well. But for now, I'm giving you the starter so you can decide, does it even look cool? Does it look like something you want to deal with? And of course, when we're playing very seriously, many of the things that change the game's systems don't come up. Until just tiny moments in matches, <clears throat> meaning that it's harder to understand what I'm talking about until you've watched the game for a while, especially if you've never played it. Fire. 
making it 2-1. That said, there are other strange things that happen with the let's call it matchmaking of this game. We do fight here partially for the ring out potential. But today we're not going to start off with that. I forgot she changed her debt to be so Muay Thai ish. Makes a lot of my dodges incorrect. And I believe that makes it 2-2. Two, two. However, I do have a slightly better chance now, as my opponent will not recover health entirely, having won the match. This happens even in the standard rounds mode, where you don't have to count it yourself and the game will count it for you. As that's just a natural aspect of the game that they specifically leave in. So, for a moment now, we have to probably find what has happened to our team members. Or maybe not. The main way to do this, of course, if you are interested in doing this sort of thing, is to find... I'll show you what it looks like. A little pad to stand on that normally synchronizes you to most other people in the area. Depending on where you entered from, where they entered from, etc. Let's see if I can find a spot where it will specifically change to the next spot of the area. If not, then we'll see what else we can do about it. It is usually a fairly easy change. Guidance Bridge. We don't fight here. This is basically because other people start here and it's really confusing if you just fight here. So I'll now head back and since I believe that my main opponent did not move from there. I'll see who I end up with. Exactly how it syncs and resyncs gets really weird sometimes, so I have no idea who I'm seeing now. Alright, I've got one... person. That was a weird outcome. Yeah, totally weird outcome. But, doesn't matter, for stream purposes, it brings me back to a person you may know, and therefore to battle. Understand above all else if it wasn't somehow obvious, this is a fighting game. almost a standard fighting game. It has many of the same frame data style interactions as, let's say, Tekken or Dead or Alive. And it has many of the same concepts around how you fight people and what exactly things are important. What it lacks is usually very minor and you just have to very slightly adjust your perceptions. So, it makes more sense to discuss this from the perspective of what is lacking. There's no throw in this game. Doesn't matter how close I get, I have to figure out how to break my opponent's guard and use up all their stamina. You see the white stamina bar in the center of my screen and at my opponents. So right now my aim, for example, should be to get the guard break. No good luck there though. Yeah, 
you are seeing, for example, a lot of frame data interactions, even though there might not be obvious that that's what's happening. My character's style allows her to dodge literally, I believe, any strike in the game. But the direction I must do this dodge, and the startup of this dodge, makes it difficult to just do as I like. So when you see me do that slight duck, that is a specific thing I must input, and I must input it when I think an attack is coming, but it does take long enough to start up that my opponent could just win because they chose a move that was faster than the dodge after whatever they did. Standard terminology for if you were a Street Fighter player or something, Omni can make himself plus 4, plus 6 usually I think it is, and this will result in me not being able to dodge out of the way, even if I dodge correctly. One more round. There are also similarly a lot of hitbox and hurtbox interactions that happen, as you would expect. And playing on defense can strongly influence whether or not you actually manage any of those things. I forgot you learned that move from me now. So, let's see. Unfortunately, this situation in setup means that whatever it is that we haven't managed to resolve in terms of people being in the group, being in the area, isn't necessarily going to resolve itself that easily. So you can think of this as loading time between matches. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> this may be a little bit harder to coordinate since I think that the two I am dealing with have to be outside of something for this to work, and I possibly should have had Omni be the one to run down here, but we'll see. It's definitely true though that if you want opponents, and if you are not particularly good at the game, for some reason this seems to be the area to go to. But alas, the result is that I am all alone, sort of? Maybe? No. Well, we haven't figured it out yet, after weeks of trying. Technically we only play this game once a week, so it doesn't really matter that much. Previously I mentioned that Omni learned a move from me. This game works under that principle for a lot of things. It is possible to spend almost all your time in the game learning moves from NPCs and other players. In order for this to work, you normally have to actually win a fight. But I guess it only counts as winning a round, meaning that it's a lot easier to learn moves if someone is willing to actually play the full first to three and not just, haha, I've won, leaving. The other requirement, of course, is that you actually defend correctly against the move in order for this to happen. So for example, if Ami did not have experience with that kick, that knee strike that I just did yet, blocking it would lead to getting experience with it to the point where he could choose to build his character in a way that would allow him to use it. I needed that extra little bit of space there. And it didn't work out. <coughs> I'm 
Confirm your rabbit's character and style, because you do choose from three of them at the beginning, and I think you get a fourth, and maybe even a fifth later on. You can see it happening here. Sometimes my attacks are just flatly stopped. A parry is available. The parry negates all of the damage, and I believe adds some hit stun, hit stop to my end. But I don't think it grants as much meter, where in this case meter refers to those two glowing shards behind my character's stomach, side, hip. character's defensive ability, on the other hand, as I mentioned before, is to evade pretty much anything. But in order to evade correctly, I must know the exact height or style of the attack I'm about to deal with, and press the correct direction. In my case, I don't think it actually works like this for most people, Though it might. You flick the right stick in the direction you want to do the evasion. So if I need to duck under my opponent's strike, I would flick the stick down. And if I wanted to hop over that sweep, for example, I would flick the stick up. Footsies. Some moves are much, much harder to dodge in this way than others because they have cool little delays on them or are just so long in animation that if you try to dodge too early, you will fail it. Alright then, let's see what happens if Omni is the one who runs off into the... I think that's the wrong way. How do I let him know it's the wrong way? Oh well. That one should work too. I would not have expected this to work before because the resynchronization seemed to go the other way somehow. I expected that I was the one who had to move around so that others could be loaded in when I moved, and not the opposite. But who knows? In the meantime, I'll briefly demonstrate what you can expect from the game when you are just starting it yourself. This, for example, is an enemy you can learn attacks from. But of course, you must beat them in order to do this, and you must defend the attacks while you're at it. That one has an orange health bar, which means they're actually fairly dangerous. Whereas this poor red fellow, who seems to be spacing out, I don't think he's actually training, is usually easy enough to get rid of in like three hits. And that won't necessarily add a lot of challenge to you. Here's someone being weird about something. But on the other hand, uh, you see, I don't know. Both end up falling into the water. But a respawn, a respawn might be a resync, so let's look into that. And if not, at worst, I might fight that person again. Oh no, how terrible. But yes, this is an open-world PvP-style game, which means that another player can run up on you when you have just fought, finished fighting someone at the end of a pair and kick you into the water. Please be careful of this. Alright then, looks like things are desynchronized in every direction, meaning that I'm the one that doesn't end up doing anything. So I'm going to try one thing, and then use the method we've been using for the last few streams to bring at least three of the members together. As far as I remember, this game actually doesn't have a limit of three people per area. If they do, it's been implemented somewhat recently. 
but it is a thing that can be affected because it does happen when you are doing things with a group that you explicitly form. As I noted before, you can't necessarily f deal with this, you can't necessarily get to fight who you want to just by heading to the same area as them visually. You do have to specifically seek them out, and in some cases you will need to be in a school with them already to have them even appear in your instance, session, whatever else. So we're going to go make a quick change and get that going. It's up here, I believe. So after dashing through a f couple of jarring camera angles... Oh, there's no one here. How nice. Mm, that's not a player, that's a normal enemy. Okay, that's good. Might as well face them off for the point of the stream. And they're red, so I'm not exactly worried here. I gotta learn something. Oh, nice. This one is in an unpleasant situation or position, but here's two people who are probably just chilling out. In this case, though, you can use the social setup to change and invite friends. In this case, I have to choose two. Actually, no. Let's do this. And it will change the setting from playing with other people who you have not specifically told. And the other way. Assuming that, of course, it works at all. Unfortunately, this means that I can't use the time to show you the system for making your own deck, but I can explain it in brief. Your character stands in one of four stances, front right, front left, rear right and rear left, or back right and back left, depending on who you learn the game from, they'll explain it. And from each of these move points, from each of these stances, you have two moves available to you. One move that is generally not supposed to combo into anything else. And another move that is meant to start the sort of automatic combo that you get. Oh no, don't have frozen on me now. The sort of automatic combo that you get when you are playing Dead or Alive, for example, and you tap punch three times. That sort of thing. This is, of course, also entirely under your control. If you've chosen to put three specific moves in sequence, the only limitation you have is the same limitation you have on any move's position. You only get one move per stance position in either of these slots. So, again, two moves overall. And when you finish a move, it will put you in a new stance position. It's not always different, but it often is. So a wide sweeping kick, for example, at your opponent's shin, is much more likely to leave you in a different position than you started it in. If you started from front right stance and did a right leg kick to swing your kicking legs around to their leg... No, don't die on me can't even go back now. If you finish such a kick, you will probably end up in at least your front left stance, if not your back left stance, which means that the only moves you can quickly combo into from there are moves that start from those stances. Aside from that, though, you have complete control entirely over which of those moves are which. I think I saw someone else moving. It's just me that can't. How terrible. 
Unfortunately, you could say unfortunately, I can't be hit in this form either, so I can't be taken out of this situation. But I don't really feel like having a part one and part two stream today. Still, this is a good point to break it up if I'm going to do it. So, we're probably going to be continuing, and we're probably going to be doing so via me ending this stream and quickly resetting it. Therefore, mapping it out part two will be where this continues.